Hello and welcome to Citrus K Knight Gaming. Citrus here. Today we're continuing on our run in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Uh, done a little bit of maintenance in between um, videos, just various things like inventory management and cashing in a couple quests and that sort of thing. So, we've got a quest down in Market Square, and we've got a quest down in Tower of Estrod. So, this is on the way, so let's go there first. Only makes sense to me, but... Enter. Oh, it started us here. Okay. Now we're meant to go back to... His remains, but I'm not too sure where that would be. I don't remember seeing dragon remains. It all looks broken there, so maybe there's another something down here that lets us get across, maybe. So I think we go back this way. For now. Looking for dragon remains. Or the place he died anyway. Not sure if there's still remains there. I think he got dragged off. I'm sure it said something about him getting dragged off. What's down there? Is that somewhere we haven't been? Oh yeah. That's somewhere we haven't been. Okay. I'm not sure if there's going to be a obvious blood trail or not. So it could actually be down here. Uh, nope, but there's something down here. The city's fallen as last. How, how glorious. Now I can stop pretending to be a shopkeeper and spend all my time on my true passion. Reanimating the dead. Okay, that's fine, I suppose. Got to have a hobby. Yeah. You can charge, can't you? Boom, you go deal with that necromancer. He's been feared. He went down. Why did he go down? Nick Mats must have cast something. Okay, you've got lay on hand self, so let's do that. Now, we got a renewed vigor ability, so we'll do that. And you've got a couple of spells, so we might actually um, 
need to rest, but we'll see. And we'll keep a couple of spells. We're going to probably have to rest because he's been blinded. Not ideal. Definitely not ideal. I suppose we rest here. Uh, no, I'd rather you over there actually. actually too sure how to trigger that. That's on me. I'm not too sure. Because you can't drag. Can you right click? No. Not sure. Not sure at all. I should really look into that, but that's all right. Let's actually just no, not rest for the recommended period. Short rest, sixteen hours. Oh, unless you only need those with three, maybe. Not sure. Hopefully that's enough to get rid of his blindness. Looks promising. And successful rolls. Look at that. We're a ha happy and healthy party again. Now we just need to find a dragon's death site. I wonder if we need to get back across here.
cellar, we get experience and some goodies, nice. Look, the door is open and now we are completely at the mercy of whatever's up there, if it really is a demon. We have nothing to fear, we have the power of inspiration after all, but hand me over my ladle and that rolling pin. people. Now look, it's not a demon at all. Greetings, kind friend and rescuer. I am Grandma Gretlin, theatre director, and these are the members of my company. Granny, that's not a ladle, that's one of the props for the malevolent lich performance, the one Tina made. It's a scepter or something. She made it out of my ladle. She wanted to use a broom handle, but I paid to that daft idea, says the dwarf with dignity. Oh, I've seen your show. You're very funny, especially your play where the woman slowly climbs onto the chair while singing and then falls off again. Ember claps her hands in delight. Well, it is actually a great tragedy about unrequited love. The chair, you see, it represents a tower of rock rising up above the raging sea like the finger of a giant. And the woman, she isn't supposed to fall, but rather gracefully cascade into the swirling abyss below. Just like I showed her a hundred times, but I'm glad you liked it. I don't care. Go away. Thank you again for rescuing our stranger today. You did a great service for Mendivian culture. And perhaps the culture of all Golarion. You'll certainly be remembered in future eras as the one who saved the critically and publicly acclaimed next door theatre. See ya. Apparently I'm a whole lot of fae like talking today, but that's all right. I don't know how I missed that before. But again, that is all right. I really don't know where. was in the main circle but I don't know where the main circle is okay let's I'm missing something Missed Okay, that's here. We go. How do we get there? Where are we on the map? So, is there a way? See athletics. He's got the high athletics. Oh no. We're gonna be in the that failing there we go. This might be the way. And squishy. Uh, what's going on here? It 
My beloved brother, I admire your zeal, of course, but would you not agree this is hardly the time to be standing guard over a hole that no one will ever emerge from? Or perhaps you're concerned that someone will decide to go for a nighttime stroll and will accidentally fall into it. Such foresight is laudable, but do you really need so many soldiers for such a task? Can't your warriors be put to better use, for instance, fighting demons or clearing rubble while the people trapped beneath it might still be alive? The face of this golden curled Asama is beautiful even by the standards of his kind, in whose veins run the blood of angels. His melodious voice sounds cheerful, but bitter reproach shimmers in his gaze. gaze. The old grey-haired fellow seems vaguely familiar. He isn't the leader of the local inquisitors by any chance. Be careful with him, boy. Those people place no value on science and they believe that ignoring high-level scientific questions to be the best response strategy, strategy. Incidentally, did you know that the fastest way to draw the attention of Iron Maiden's inquisitors is a hearty, heartily bellowed Hail Baphomet? After that, you will have precisely three seconds to explain yourself, so it's best to prepare what you wish to say in advance. Don't you dare call me Brother Heretic. The signs of recent hard fighting are obvious in the stern old man. His armour is dented and covered in blood, and his unnatural pallor suggests something more dangerous than wounds inflicted by claws and fangs. Nevertheless, his gaze is stony and his voice, accustomed to barking orders, is harsh and clipped. How dare you accuse me of doing nothing to protect the city, especially now when followers of your temple were caught committing treason. To my mind, you are no different than the demon worshippers, those miscreants, those beasts that are digging in under the city walls. Everyone knows, my dearest prelate, that you, in your zealous pursuit of order in the city, you have long since forgotten how to tell friend from foe, and good from evil. That's what happened with my adepts, whose act of treason was a genuine attempt to save the city. And yet again, I am forced to repeat myself. While we are wasting time on pointless quarrels, people were dying under the rumble in our city. People whom we could have saved if you had only set your soldiers to the task, and not kept them here, surrounding a useless and utterly harmless hole on the ground. Harmless? Well, if it's on your say so, then it must mean there is someone down there. Your associates, no doubt. And they're just waiting for us to abandon our posts before they slink out and try again to... The old man notices your approach. And you. I remember you. You appeared in my city the day the demons attacked and Tyrion de Lev died. What are you doing here? Answer at once or I'll have you strung up by your ankles before you know it. Don't think that the demons have wounded me. I still have enough strength to take on a hundred of your sword. And what is this hideous creature? Her room peers at Lan with suspicion. Lan, at your service. The Mongol ducks his head in a bow. Bow. My forebears fought in the First Crusade. I've lived in Kinnabris my whole life and... Sorry. You haven't ever seen me before? Ah, it must be because you don't ever venture into our underground district. We have been meaning to complain to the city authorities that our paving stones have been in need of repair for a long time. The First Crusade, so you're a mongrel. Hmm. You obviously know human speech. Surprisingly well, in fact. Alright, let's be off with you. The prelate looks at you. If he causes any trouble, I shall hold you responsible. Come to think of it, you still haven't told me who you are. Yeah, I'm a crusader. A crusader, you say? Humph, I'll be looking into that. You obviously don't know to whom you're speaking. I'm the one who decides who's a crusader and who's a traitor in the city. Hurun Shapok, prelate of Kinabres by the grace of Her Majesty Queen Galfrey, and the city's defender against threats from within and without. And as we can see, you've done a sterling job protecting the city. The golden curled Asama flashes a flinty smile. I am Ramian of Edme, prior of the Temple of Desna, which alas currently lies in ruins. Wise Hulun here believes it is vital to guard this hole in the ground from which he is certain demons will emerge at any moment. I have tried to convince him that the city has far more urgent matters to deal with. For instance, rescuing those currently dying under the rubble. 
you know what, there may in fact be one matter that is more important than guarding this hole. I've put it off and put it off and look where it's led us. I should have had you hung from the gates back when you dared to defend your gang of delinquent demon collaborators. If the Sakorians had ha- hanged Arilu Vorlesh while they had the chance, there never would have ever been a war. I won't repeat their mistake, I won't hesitate any longer. Soldiers seize the scum. Prelate, see reason. These are frightening times, but threatening to hang someone without trial. That is unworthy of a certain of Iomede. Old man fixes his eye on Sela. Lest you forget, girl, we may serve the same goddess, but you are not an inquisitor. Don't question the way I choose to serve Iomede, and I won't question yours. Asuma holds up his hands in a placating gesture. Placating gesture. Stop, you are the defenders of what remains of Kinabris. Can't you think of anything better to do than be at each other's throats in the ruins of the city? Ramian looks at the prelate. You are a fool, Hurun. You are a zealot and a murderer, but you are a fool first and foremost. I told you that the world stone was weakened. You wouldn't listen. You wouldn't listen. I warned you that the city was going to be attacked. You shooed me away. The truth is that my young adepts were trying to save the Wardstone, and you stopped them. Of course, those truly responsible for this tragedy are the demons, but you have done nothing to prevent it, and now you would still rather kill an innocent person and perish yourself than admit that you were wrong, as always. With a wave of his wand, the Asuma vanishes. Beast, heretic, traitor. He slipped away again. The prelate stamps his foot in outrage, then turns his eyes on you. What about you? Whose side are you on? If you want me to believe that you're no cultist, go and recapture that traitor for me. Or perhaps you want to defend him. In that case, my soldiers don't need to be told twice. Um... I see you suffered greatly in battle. Nonsense. I had to deal with the brood of Nabasus. It was nothing. I've taken on worse enemies with the goddess's help. Succeeded at knowledge of Kainichik. Nabasus, also known as death demons, have the ability to drain their victim's life force. Judging by Hurun's pallor, he has lost a significant amount of his energy. The Inquisitor can bluster as much as he wants, but right now he's far from the peak of his abilities. Ah... He's weak, maybe we kill him. <laughs> why, why? You must not be from these parts, or you wouldn't have asked such a question. I look for enemies everywhere because our enemies are everywhere. Who are we at war with? Demons, demons and cultists. They are masters of deception. They worm their way into your favour and masquerade in all manner of false guises. Do you think Dresden was taken by force? No, by trickery. Were it not for me, Kenabrest would have gone the same way long ago, captured out from under our noses. Now listen to what I'm about to tell you. This was a long time ago. I was very young then, and I had just joined the crusade. Back then, Kinnabris didn't have a garrison so much as a public thoroughfare. Anyone who wanted could just stroll into the city. One day at dawn, a group of refugees came up to the city gates, bold as brass. The guards let them in, and why not, for no one was ever turned away. T'was no matter. Everyone was welcome in our city. If you came from Mendev or if you'd Hold yourself here from across the seas. The crusade accepted all and sundry. But on this occasion we paid dearly for our laxity. Just as soon as those innocent lambs entered the city, they transformed into demons and rushed towards the wardstone, slaughtering everyone who tried to stop them. Sixty-two people died in less than a minute. The demons used their mutilated corpses to de- desecrate the obelisk. None of them dared to go near it. 
the light of the goddess burned them all, so they threw the blood from afar, spattering the wardstone from every direction. And the lead demon, an honest beast, Menargo is her name, jeered and gloated, saying we mortals had been sitting ducks. And the creature was right too. We let our guard down and we got what we deserved. That bloodbath came to be known as the Red Morning Manus Massacre, and it was burned into the townsfolk's memories. Since then, Kennebrace has adopted different practices. Heretics, cultists, spies, all the rabble who coveted Arilu's Ar glory. We drove them all out of the city. We haven't had any trouble here since. Many have come here, even the Balokoramzade, and they have all been sent straight back to where they came from, or else they were killed for their trouble. You see, Descari himself had to crawl out of the abyss and come here. The goddess cursed him in order to break through our defences. And what did he do? He left again, and we're still fighting. Now what is this vigilant and... Now this is what vigilance and discipline can do. Uh, I won't hear another word. Demons are hiding underground. The proof is all around you. The demon spawn that try to call out can't harm anyone now. Wait, you're trying to lure me away from here, aren't you? The narrowed eyes hurl and scans you from here today. Perhaps you're a cultist too, want to help your friends underground, do you? Well, you won't fool me, I won't take a single step away from here. And if you keep talking nonsense, I'll have you strung up for treason. I'm really tempted to attack him. Go on then, if you have to. It would be good if you could return with the head of that scum. Ember peers intently at Hurun. I remember you when Father and I arrived in the city. In the city, you met us. What is this gibberish? As if I have nothing better to do than to arrange meetings with vagrants. But it's true. You and the other knights tied us to stakes and started lighting the bonfire. Father died, and then one of your knights changed his mind and pulled me from the flames, but then he died too. Don't you remember? If you were burned, then it was with good reason. You say some traitor helped you escape from the fire. That is a crime in itself, which means that you have been evading justice all these years. If it weren't for the invasion, I would review your case and see that your sentence was finally fulfilled. You're lucky that we have more important matters to deal with right now. He didn't look the way he does now, all wrinkled and grey. He was young, with a big moustache. Ember smiles broadly and draws a large bushy moustache in the ear with, ear with her finger. You probably forgot all about me. It was a long time ago. But I do want to say one thing. I'm not cross with him. This knight is a true hero. He just really, really wanted to protect his city. And he got all mixed up about who was good and who was evil. I'm now going to kill him. No forgiveness from me. St stupid inquisitors, anyway. Let's definitely rage, definitely rage. Two uses of this image is to cause or heal damage. Ah. That's pretty cool. How much does it do? 3d8 plus 1 point per caster level.
Maybe just that one. Let's get rid of the little guys first. Wonder if there's an anchor you can get a nice flame. See if we can stun him. He's probably gonna have a high Okay, yeah, you can start attacking him. You start attacking. Pop the big potion. Doing the heal. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Uh. Get rid of him. Down hand self. Nice. Deadly blow, only by sheer luck. If the hit points fall below the negative constitution score again, then they will truly die. This condition can be removed by visiting a healer at the capital or by greater restoration. Ooh. Okay. Let's trigger that. And let's. Um, we got another one of those big ones, and then we'll do a couple of those, and then we'll use some of these. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, do they have any goodies? Some little potions, some of those. Unidentified. Oh, worth good money. Worth good money. Basic shields. Basic armor. Nice. The demon invasion transformed all, all of Kinnabras into one great battlefield, but nowhere in the city suffered as much as the square. This place saw a clash of titans, the demon lord Descari leading his hordes from the abyss and the dragon terror Rendelef, the mightiest of the city's defenders and one of the first to fall. The scene of destruction leaves no doubt as to the battle's outcome. A skilled scout could recreate the course of the battle moment by moment simply, simply by looking at the ruins. 
from the chimneys torn down by powerful wings and a sharp dive to the bloody tracks left behind when the demon dragged away the noble reptile's broken body. But as no hypothetical scout gazed upon the ruins, it is Gorag Uldaga, and he is not alone. The shadow of a strange, barely perceptible presence lingers over this place, like a gaze untethered from any observer, this mysterious force unknown to mortal kind silently assesses judges and seeks a better way. In an instant, Gorag Uldaga is vested with his power and looks at the world with its eyes. The past, present and future stand before him as a unified whole, an unmoving multifaceted crystal that would be beautiful were it not for the fractures, blemishes and flecks marring his splendor. What past does he see? In the past exists the one who wielded this gaze in life. Although the one and life are in a posit terms for aeons, the supernatural embodiments of cosmic balance, rather than who or what, a better word for these entities is how. This aeon appeared from outside this world and from the great beyond. To put an end to the intermingling of the planes and destroy the world wound. The chasm disrupting the order of the multiverse Alas, the visitor from beyond proved too weak for the battle they came to fight. They even failed to finish casting the spell that would have sent Discardi back to the abyss. With one swing of his scythe, the demon lord cut the Aeon down. What present? Ooh, purple stone knife. I wonder what that does. Ruins, blood, corpses. None thus perturbs the Aeon's dispassionate gaze. The living are alive, the dead will be judged by Phrasma. All is as it should be. But the demons circling in the sky or prowling through the streets create a jarring juxtaposition, like splashes of blood red ink on a restrained pencil sketch. They should not be here. The world of mortals is for mortals. The demons' place is in the demon world. How sublime the world would be if everything in it knew its place. But even the demons aren't as abhorrent as the sharp-edged, unassuming crystal languishing in the dirt among the bricks and smashed cobblestones. No mortal would notice it, but to the Aeon's eyes its mere existence is an outrage against universal laws. If the Aeon still existed, they would not stop until the crystal was unmade. But the Aeon is gone, and only the gaze remains. Gorok Uldaga picks the crystal up out of the dirt and stows it in his pocket. He is mortal, which means he has the power to decide what to do with it. Future. Good and evil, chaos and order, everything is in its lawful place in the multiverse and is no longer trespassing where it does not belong. Nothing is disrupting the smooth and steady current of the river of souls from life into death and back to life again. The reality, rid of its flaws, is not perfect. Is now perfect, and the Aeons withdraw to eternally admire its beauty, which will never be threatened again. Continue. After allowing the hero to view the world through their eyes, the little that remained of the destroyed Aeon is killed, even appropriate here for an entity that is so removed from life and death as we understand them used up its last vestiges of energy. Now they are ready to disperse into nothingness, unless someone decides to preserve the Aeon within themselves. Will the hero take on this power so that he may again look at the world through another's eyes, or will he allow it to vanish? Aeon Mythic Path. Retain the Aeon's power within yourself. Sure. A spirit of the Aeon dwells out of sight, deep in Gorogoldaga's soul, like a pair of magical spectacles stowed away until the moment when the hero once again needs to look at the world through another's eyes. Cool. So as we don't die. Few little guys. No, 
berries. Uh, oh, nine armor unidentified. Secret, secret. Don't know. Maybe we finished the looking for dragon quest. Is it a stranger up there? Gods, I found someone who isn't fleeing in a panic. Are you crusaders, mercenaries? Uh, Gumley Helm, half elf, is so frightened he can barely get the words out. I'm a servant of Count Dairin Kale Nevis Arande. My lord's mansion is under attack by demons. The master himself and all his guests are trapped inside, and the house guards are nowhere to be found. I managed to escape through a service pa servant's passage to look for help. Will you help me? Mention is only a stone's throw away on the next street over. You meet your guys with gaze with pleading eyes. Count Arende. I have seen him a few times before from afar. He looked highly audacious. I confess that he just captured my attention, but that's neither here nor there. We should help him. The gratitude of a rich and influential man can only benefit us. Succeeded at knowledge check. You have heard about the Arande family before. This wealthy and noble Mendivian dynasty was almost wiped out by demons more than ten years ago. The last surviving member of the family, the young Count Dairin, has an infamous reputation. He is well known for being a rake and a rogue. Sure. Not far at all. You're better off entering from the next street over. Through the passage I used to get out. Help, I'm begging you. I hate to think what the Count will do to me if I don't bring back help. Alright. Well, I think we will call it there for today. We start going into mansions, and we do have that guy to go and investigate as well. And then we've got to go get healed. But yes, so that's been us for today. Achieved a, li a little bit more. So thank you for watching the video. Do the whole decay and subscribe thing, and we will catch you next time. Citrus out.